In this video, we're checking out the Epax X1, a small form factor MSLA resin 3D printer that is really quite worthy of your attention. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. There's a slight change of set today because, well, there's a certain 3D printer downstairs that's very, uh, very loud. So we're here today and for another, another 3D printer review. But without any further ado, like so many other entry-level resin printers on the market today, the Epax X1 uses an LCD screen to selectively mask layers cured by a UV light source from below. And it has a print volume of 115 by 65 by 155 millimeters in the Z, which, while small, is perfectly suited to the tiny high definition prints this machine's capable of thanks to its 2560 by 1440 pixel LCD. The first thing that struck me with this printer was honestly its aesthetic. It's the only resin printer I've tested so far that actually resembles an industrial system with an incredibly sturdy sheet metal chassis and windowed cover which hinges out of the way to access the resin tray and print platform. I like it quite a lot. The film used at the bottom of the vat is different too, with EPAX using a special non-FEP film which claims to reduce the likelihood of prints adhering to the film instead of the aluminium build platform which is, and this is important, already leveled from factory. Yes, out of all the resin systems I've tested so far, this is the only machine that did not need any leveling or layer height adjustments from the box. The only thing I did was play a little bit with the print exposure settings because this Anycubic skin resin needed just a little bit more time to cure correctly, but that's literally all I did. It's incredible how quickly you can get a machine like this up and running. The Z-axis mechanic is this supported rod setup with U-bearings riding on the outside. It's not a linear rail per se, but I didn't notice any layer inconsistencies and most importantly, no Z wobble. I thought it was best to compare the usability of this machine, the X1, to the Elegoo Mars as both are prime candidates for a first resin 3D printer and I could slice and send the same models to test using Chitu Box for a direct comparison. There are a few versions of the X1 and this is the model with USB as well as an Ethernet connectivity. That USB though, look, hey, it's towards the front, just on the side there. So loading in models is super easy if you have the machine facing you versus the Mars, which had it at the back. Loading up models through the color touch screen, like the Elegoo Mars, is simple and intuitive. However, something I appreciate here is the cooling fans only spool up once the print begins and turn off once the print's complete. Now this machine does need cooling fans because those UV LEDs get quite hot and needs to uh, you know, facilitate cooling them down and venting the heat, but it only turns on one when it's needed, which I don't know why other machines on the market don't do this. Once I figured out the tweak settings for the Anycubic resin, all of my test prints completed with zero failures, although thin models did have some warping issues when I poorly cured them by just dumping them out in the sun, uh, which isn't the best way to do it. I need to definitely build a uniform UV light source to cure these items, which are something I'll be sorting out very soon. Thanks to my supporters over on Patreon, I've recently acquired a macro lens, so enjoy these ultra close-ups of prints. Like many other MSLA resin printers on the market now, the X1 comes ready to take advantage of anti-aliasing from the factory, so you don't have to worry about any firmware updates to take advantage of it, which reduces the already tiny voxel-like artifacts left by the LCD pixels. This artifacting is most visible on subtle curved surfaces, but you'd be incredibly hard pressed to notice it with anti-aliasing enabled. And I found it fascinating that this Barbarian model, which is the identical file that I printed on this machine and the Elegoo Mars, had the leg fail to adhere on the Mars, but it printed perfectly on the Epax X1. So there might really be something to this more expensive non-FEP film. And more expensive is what you'll pay for this machine, which comes in at 399 to 429 USD, depending on options. And that's a fair jump above the Elegoo Mars, which is around 260 US these days on Amazon currently. And a closer comparison would probably be the upcoming Mars Pro with its improvements on usability, which brings it closer in line with the X1, but even that's probably only gonna be around $300. So what should you go for? 
Well, like I've mentioned before, it's mostly a game of usability improvements when it comes down to these machines because both the Mars and the X1 will print highly detailed models. But in the case of the X1, you're getting a better thought out interface, bulletproof sheet metal frame and mechanical design, plus a hinge door at the front, that non-FEP film, although they do sell it separately if you want to give it a crack on any machine. And the fact it came from the factory pre-leveled and ready to go out of the box was a huge speed boost in getting it up and running. The process of leveling on these machines isn't too difficult, but having to clean up after a print adhesion failure on these machines is just the worst. Not to mention the destruction that will occur if you try to print with cured debris floating in the resin vat after a failed print. Because yes, as I do need to mention in these reviews, the film is a consumable and the LCD is a consumable too. You need to consider the fact that it will die over time due to the heat exposure and anything of the, any debris in the, in the vat, if you try to print with it, will just destroy the fragile glass. Of interesting note, however, neither machine has Wi-Fi, which will make my imminent review of the Nova 3D Elfin somewhat of a spanner of the works. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. But which one you go for will really come down to your budget and use case. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any experiences to share on the Epax X1 or similar resin printers, I'd love to read them in the comments below. And if you'd like to pick one of these machines up, you can find purchase links in the video description. So full disclosure, Epax sent me this machine free of charge for purpose of review and all opinions are my own. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.